Hello, everybody. Today I will be discussing the article College Ready at a Cost, Underrepresented Students Overwhelmed, Scared, Increasingly Stressed, and Coping. Uh, one of the strengths I really liked was the overall writing, the article as a whole. Um, I thought it was really um, easy to understand what they wanted to do. Um, I felt that, you know, I think the problem was laid out in the beginning, something I didn't feel was as clear in the previous articles. But I think that was a strength on this one. And I'm, I'm while it's still not what I think I want to see, which is like the problem, and then with the subheading, I still felt that this one was laid out pretty well. So I'm going to give it that. The abstract was really well done. I really liked it. Um, the limitations were mentioned. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, that was a nice section, and I really appreciate that. I'm going to get into more of that later as one of the critiques, but nevertheless, I'll have to give them um, some credit for having that limitation section. I liked that the findings were very clear. Um, and then I noticed the conceptual framework uh, portion was also very, very interesting. I liked how it got its own, its own section. Um, that's certainly something that I would like to see more often because it really helps me learn as a, as a reader how they're kind of going through and what basically their theoretical foundations are for approaching the study in the way that they do. Um, for the first time as a second strength, I noticed it was like a literature review and it seemed to be kind of a way uh, clearly demarcated and it existed in a way that I had hoped to have seen previously, but this one kind of made sense to me. Um, there was, it was, it was very clear. I saw the synthesis there and I saw how it tied together and how it led to where they were going. And I noticed that, uh, they had identified, um, basically a gap, um, and what they had found. And that was in the last paragraph, um, where they were talking about what they wanted to do with their own study and kind of, I thought that that really flowed together well, um, as something that I would like to see. Definitely it talks about the, the methods that were used and talking about um, some of the findings from one of the authors, Gil Yardy. Um, and so, you know, it kind of starts getting into where some of the gaps are and some of the critiques that they saw in the other ones. And I thought that that laid a nice foundation for where they're going right now, working on the literature review um, that I'm currently on, which is my first one, is kind of like giving me an idea for how to, to um, phrase it within my article or within the white paper that I'm going to write. But it helps a lot to kind of see that example um, and see kind of how the literature review does links into the overall um, research, um, the, the the project that you're doing. And so that, I don't know, it helped to see that. That was one of the first times I saw it that clear. So definitely I'll give that as a second strength. Um, now into qualitative, you know, this was a qualitative, I think is one of those areas that I feel more comfortable with. I don't, I don't necessarily know other than maybe a fear of the statistics with the quantitative. Um, and, you know, a lot of the just uh, the unfamiliarity that I had with the quantitative, you know, you don't have that same problem with qualitative. However, there's a whole new side of it with criticisms. And that just, you know, it kind of, and I'll get into that in the overall takeaways later. But um, while they mentioned earlier the limitations, you know, I didn't really see kind of the alternate alternative interpretations. They kind of hinged upon a couple of the key uh, quotes that they had received from the students. And, you know, to me, those don't necessarily have to, you know, prove kind of to the point that they're wanting to use it. It seems like there could definitely be alternative interpretations there. And from the um, the checklist, I noticed that and that kind of caught my eye. And are they exploring alternative interpretations? I think that's very important with qualitative. Um, also, um, you know, it goes back into the same similar situation about the other articles where are the problems that they mentioned universal uh, to everybody who's going through the through college readiness, getting all students going through that phase? Or is it only in particular to the students? You know, it kind of seems like they're leading the reader in that sense. Um, and it's kind of like what I'm going to get into in the second critique, a little bit of cherry picking. And so, you know, I don't know, that's just, I think with the qualitative, I'm going to have to learn how to really compare good. It almost seems like qualitative is always going to be subject to that same criticism um, and just in general. And I don't think that that's fair, but I think that that's always kind of there. Um, and so that kind of gets me thinking mixed method, 
um, would be a way to go because I think they do complement each other. But um, if not left alone, if you're looking, dealing with surveys and just taking um, samples of what students are saying, a lot of that can just be anecdotal. Um, and it could also be subject to interpretation, um, you know, because it's kind of subjective. And so it seems that the author may lead with that as to where they where they're thinking, but definitely it gets into kind of what, you know, a lot of about maybe what their interpretation of the, it, it, you know, it just, to me, it's hard to kind of see that as a scientific study unless they explore all of those alternative um, interpretations and biases, making sure that they really, I don't know, it just seems like a, an uphill battle from the beginning with a lot of qualitative studies. I don't know, that might be too harsh and definitely something that, you know, I believe strongly in the importance of qualitative research, but I think there's a way that I would like to see more examples of how it could really be done well. Um, <clears throat> takeaways, coding is something that is really just super interesting to me. Um, it's a kind of a way to make these qualitative studies scientific, if you will. I think that's really interesting. That's something that I would like to really explore and get better at. Um, and I'm really glad to see that because I think that it kind of takes away some of those criticisms that I had mentioned earlier, reduces the amount of subjectivity and kind of makes it seem a little bit more scientific um, in turn, or at least it's really starting to look for those trends, which I think gets into the sample size. Um, I noticed the sample size was like 59. I think that was good. Um, in office hours uh, earlier la um, this week, we were talking about how 30 is a good number because that's one of my concerns is how can I improve in my ability to um, really, you know, judge um, the statistical analyses of these studies. And, you know, one of those is sample size. I think the sample size 59 was a good size. Um, you know, like I was mentioning, it's really easy to be hard on qualitative. I don't think that's fair. Um, I think it's a matter of me beginning to have um, enough practice and seeing enough different ones to kind of see the positive, some the ones that are better than others. But nevertheless, I think it is easier to be hard on qualitative just because of the fact that it tends to possibly be anecdotal at times or subjective. Um, one thing that's exciting to me is how that qualitative can work together and support quantitative studies. So in mixed methods, I think um, together, they it's really a strong force because um, especially with the qualitative, you get into kind of some of the, the why and the how, some of those deeper um, um, rev, uh, revelatory points that I think help readers kind of see um, and learn from what they're, what they're exploring. Um, and then, of course, I really like the declaration of conflicting interests and declaration of funding. I thought that's important. Not every um, article, I don't think, has that, but I really felt that that was important to list. And I like to see that more because it kind of shows you that, um, and I kind of, it's a good learning tool to see where the funding's coming from and to also see how the uh, authors of the article are exploring those conflicting interests and um, making sure to remove any potential for bias by being transparent with the audience. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I look forward to your feedback.